Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to create an admin area, which is crucial for you to get the experience that you want with your dashboard. So we're going to add a sheet and we're going to call this admin. And what goes in here is a series of lists and important information that you store about your data so that you can use this information in calculations and drop down menus and things like this. That's at least how I go about it. So to give an example, if I want to always find a list of all of my athletes and use that as a drop down list, let's say, which might is probably isn't relevant because we have our player profiles, but we can use a function called unique. So we'll go equals unique open parenthesis go to our player profile area or our profiles select cell a2 and go colon a what that's saying is we want a unique list of all these names from a2 to a and it automatically excludes blanks in google sheets so we can close the parenthesis and click enter and there are all of our names and if we wanted this list sorted a to z we can add a sort function on top of this. These are two very pow powerful functions, especially when used together, and we will use them later also in some dashboard designs. Go sort, open parenthesis, unique, and I think we can just close the parenthesis here and click enter, and now we have a list of A to Z. And we might call this list, let's just call this all or all athletes. And maybe we'll bold that. And now maybe we want a list of just the active athletes because we want our dashboards or the people that we select in our drop down menus to only include athletes that we say are active for their profile. So an athlete comes to your team or they come to your school and they eventually leave the team or they eventually graduate. You don't want them active anymore. So you uncheck the active box, and then they don't appear in drop-down menus anymore. And what that allows you to do is control who shows up on your dashboard and where they show up. And it also allows you to maintain the calculations that you need in your testing data set. So for example, you may have had five athletes last year that graduated. And in your testing data set, the athletes exist, and their positions and all that stuff are used in the position calculations every year, but they just don't show up on your dashboards anymore. So you get the best of both worlds where you control who's on your visualizations and you still have the calculations that you need to use, like let's say the position average over the past 10 years or the position average for the year that some of those athletes um, were still there, whatever the case may be. So let's create another list and we'll call this list active athletes and we're going to use the same formulas that we used here so we go equals unique uh, actually actually let's let, let's remove this and let's go to our formula that we have here let's put dollar signs around the a and the two and the a and click enter and then let's just copy this formula once you have dollar signs around the a two and a copy it and paste it here because essentially we're doing the same thing, but we're adding another function in here. And this function is also extremely powerful and oftentimes used with these other ones. Inside unique, a new function called filter. Oop, filter, open parenthesis. Now what filter needs, it needs a range and you add filters just like you would in a table to the criteria. So we want all the athlete names, comma, but when what is true or when what isn't true. Well, we want all the athletes' names for when, let's go to the profiles, when I2 colon I equals, so when the status or the active athlete column is equals true. And remember in the first video, a checkbox being checked equals true, a checkbox unchecked equals false. And now let's just put some dollar signs for the I and the 2 and the I in case you want to copy this formula again and click enter and the list is exactly the same but now what happens when we go into our profiles and we start unchecking some guys or girls and we go to our admin 
Now this list is way shorter. And in our player profile that we have, which currently is a dropdown of all the athletes in our system, we can change the data validation of this dropdown list. So let's go to data, data validation. Instead of looking at our profiles, now that we have this admin area, let's get our list from, we'll go to our admin area, C2, admin C2 to colon C, or all the, all the names that are in column C, which we decide what they are because we check or uncheck the players as active. We click OK, save, and now if we go to our player profile, only the lists of active players will show up here. Notice there are only a few players, and if we go to our profiles and we select everybody else and go back to our player profile, now we have all the names available to us. So we're controlling what's possible on our dashboards through our admin area. That's the concept. The last thing that I want to add into this admin area in this video is a list of our metrics and some information about them. So let's call this, let's call this metric list, or we'll call it testing metric list, because we're going to add some more, some other data sets into this thing. And to get a metric list of our testing data that always updates, we can use the transpose function, which just inverts what's, so this list goes row by row down. And if we use transpose on this list, we'll go equals transpose. And let's do C2 colon to C. Sorry, it's ugly. And click enter. It just flips it. So we get the names, but now it goes column by column. And we're going to do the same thing, but with our testing data headers. So we'll go equals transpose, open parenthesis, go to our testing data, and just select column one and close the parenthesis and click enter. And now we have all of our headers listed or all of our metrics are here and we have a list of them. Having the metrics isn't too useful in itself, but we need to, I like to have a data dictionary of sorts for each of my frameworks where not only do I have each metric, but I have what it means, potentially how it's calculated, uh, what the units are, and most importantly and most relevant to what we're doing here is whether lower means better, essentially. So for example, a lower 10 meter sprint time in theory is better than a higher 10 meter sprint time in the context of performance. Whereas a counter movement jump that's lower is not better than a higher counter movement jump. So, I'll add a column and we'll call it lower. I'm just going to call it lower, lower is better. It doesn't really matter what the column name is. I'll bold it. And now in this column, I'm just going to have a bunch of checkboxes. So hold down control shift in the down arrow all the way to the bottom of my sheet and go to insert checkbox. So we have checkboxes everywhere. But importantly, next to each metric, there's one. And we can check off 10 meter sprint, 20 meter sprint, body fat where lower is better in the context of performance. And you might have some other information on here too, and we will actually expand on this table later as we get into 1RM stuff and program design stuff. But the last thing that I want to do here is I just want to make the font. Let's make it Varela round, like we have all of our fonts. This is just more of a formatting thing get all these headers and make them dark gray with a white background. And I'm not going to really do, yeah, fine. We'll go to format, alternating colors here, and we'll go A2 to A and exclude the header and click done. And I'm just going to do that for all of these. So we'll go to format, alternating colors, just so it looks nice. Undo the header and we'll go C2 to C. It's good practice and click done. And here we'll go format alternating colors, exclude the header, and we'll go E2. Whoops, I don't know what I did there. E2 to F, and we'll probably have to change this. 
but we're good for now and click done so at least it looks kind of nice and one really important consideration with these testing metrics and the list as you build this out this transpose function it takes things in order right and we have checks in certain boxes so if we decide i'm just going to do this so that we can see what happens in our testing data we decide all right we're going to add a column right here and we're going to call it adam right we have a new column it's called adam it's right here when we go to our admin area we should see that column adam but all these check boxes are offset now now broad jump is lower is better and that's not true so let's go back to our testing data and remove the column adam and go back to our admin and now everything looks good this is an important consideration the way that i typically do things is i know everything that i'm going to collect and if i make an addition i'm adding it to the end or i know that i'm making an addition and i know that i need to go here and, and make an adjustment one of those two things is occurring so just recognizing that where you place your columns in your table affects things is an important consideration that you need to make when you're building this thing out and with the template that i give you there's going to be okay there's going to be a bunch of metrics that are just manual entry and then there are going to be a bunch of calculations and then there are going to be a bunch of other types of calculations that we'll get into later but essentially it's set up where you enter in all your manual metrics and then you remove the columns that you don't need or you just keep them there and leave them there as blank and then there are going to be all these calculations and then you can remove the ones you don't need or just leave them there i might advise leaving them there in case you want to add things on into different areas but in any case just be cognizant of this admin metric list being continually updated by your columns and if you don't want to affect what's going on with these columns then you need to add other metrics at the end so that the stuff before it is not affected and this is just the beginning of the admin area we're going to be going back and forth in and out of it and with that being said that's it for this video in the next one we're actually going to start building out the visualization side of things for the testing data and that's going to be really fun to get started on that so i hope that you're going to tune in for that one and thank you so much for watching this video please remember to give it a like and subscribe to the channel if it's valuable to you and i'm really excited for the next one because visualization is fun the behind the scenes stuff is fun for me but i know it's not fun for you so great work so far and i'm excited to see you in the next video